All right, here we are with the very first tricks and tools from the Elite Series. Just got done with Lake Okeechobee, had a uh, progressively better finish there. I uh, started off not so well. I was in 73rd after the first day. I only had 12 and a half pounds the first day. And then the second day, got it in gear a little better, got a couple big bites, had 17 and a half, jumped all the way up to 48th, got me into that day three, went out there day three, caught 16 plus pounds day three, and was able to jump up to 33rd. So I'm gonna show you the baits that I was using in order to, to catch all those fish. And then I'm gonna explain to you a few tricks along the way on uh, how to catch a few more fish for you while you're out there. So I'm gonna start with the, uh, the, the number one bait for me for all three days really, is I was starting out uh, in the river and had another spot just outside that I was catching them on a Carolina rig. Now these are hard spots. I was fishing you know, eight to probably 16 feet deep places that I had found in the river uh, that had, there were, like I said, hard spots, little point kind of places, about three different places that were all a little bit different. I really thought that all I was gonna catch was about eight or nine pounds off of each, a couple of these places. That's all I thought that was there. But during the tournament, I realized that there were bigger fish there. You just had to kind of like go through the smaller ones to, uh, to get to those big ones. So I'm gonna just show you the, the first portion of this is is the the tungsten weight. I was using a three quarter ounce tungsten weight. I think that was key. I'm using a glass bead eight millimeter and then a little Carolina clicker is what they call that. That helps protect the knot. And then the knot is going to the Spro power swivel. You can see right there. Uh, that was That's a big part of the setup. I think that this tungsten weight being three quarters ounce um, if I went any heavier, I feel like I was going to get hung up too much. There wasn't a lot down there, but there was some rock and some rubble, uh, a little bit of gravel. That way, that definitely triggers the fish's attention, gets them interested, and then dangling on behind it, you end up getting the tasty morsel that I love to throw in a Carolina rig. This is a baby destroyer for missile. This is bruiser flash color. That was what I was using down in Florida. 3 aught Gamakatsu Offset Shank Round Bend Worm Hook. That is the classic right there. That is the money maker. Um, I actually caught a limit, probably about nine pounds worth. Uh, I caught like probably 10 keepers in the first hour, hour and a half. And, and, I, and I got out of there. And then I went to the lake, started fishing into the grass, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the, the rest of the setup for, uh, for this is that I had about a three foot liter of 14 pound Sunline Shooter, Sunline Shooter, 14 pound, 20 pound Mainline, Sunline Shooter, again, Cashin Icon, seven foot three, medium heavy rod, that's my Carolina rig rod, that's my baby, that's my go-to, and then the Daiwa Zillion SVTW, that is in the faster 8.5 gear ratio. I wanna be able to, to gather up a lot of line real fast uh, when I'm done with my cast, or if one bites it, and I want to, I want to reel up as much line as quick as possible before I lean into them, get that sweeping hook set. That's uh, that's another key to the Carolina rig. Reel up all of your slack before you set the hook. Reel up all that slack, then lean back into them, and just let that rod completely load. You let that rod completely load, and then you just kind of keep pulling those fish. Once they start shaking their head, done deal done deal. That gamakatsu is going to get wrenched into their into their mouth somewhere. Done deal. Just put them on in the boat. You got 14 pound leader. Unless you're throwing it in something really gnarly, you don't need to uh, slow down for anything less than five pounds. Just heave them right into the boat. Done deal. Uh, I think I only had one fish over five pounds. That was the third day. It was a key fish. A little over five pounds. That fish really, really helped me uh, jump all the way up to 33rd place in there. I went from like, I don't know, um, 13 pounds, something like that to 16 in one fish. Pretty darn awesome. Um, but that's the that's the key there is the, the three quarter ounce weight tungsten with that little that little ticker in there ahead of that spro swivel. That is that is key. And then the uh, that baby destroyer. 
that was the and then the, the first day i did catch one big one out on the lake on half ounce jackhammer black and blue I had the spunk shad in bruiser flash on the back the five and a half i wanted that bigger profile and sure enough choked it a four and three quarters choked it uh 20 pound sunline shooter and the rod this is the trick here to the rod i have played around and i found that the cash in it's in the ck series this is a kayak series a couple of kayak pros for for cash in really really dialed this rod in and it's called the chattergrass rod it is super slick seven foot four inch fast action medium heavy it is called the chattergrass if you look look at uh in the cash in um kayak i've got a couple of these this is absolutely money for a chatterbait it has just the right bend this is the this is the real trick for this bait right here i'm telling you you see it's not a super stiff rod it's it's actually pretty moderate with its bend that is the trick to it right there that is money i was throwing it on 20 wanted to keep that that bait up a little bit a lot of grass half ounce with that that five and a half inch helped keep that up a little bit as well bigger profile they just absolutely mauled it that was the key the seven to one daiwa uh, zillion svt tw was the was the reel that is uh you can heave it a mile with that reel that is one of the huge advantages to to go into these zillions is that you can get the casting distance uh whatever you're using i was using the that tattoos before great very good good reel probably another 10 percent casting distance that's just once you get them really dialed in man they just really really go that is key down there in florida in florida casting distance can be a big big deal those fish get so pressured almost every single fish i caught on the chatterbait was way out from the boat i didn't catch very many close to the boat most of them were way out away from the boat they had no idea i was there uh that's so that was key second day second day a little bit of schooling action was going on uh, on in the river uh, on one of the spots I was throwing a Carolina rig. So I picked up old Mr. Zara Spook. I have two, I took the middle hook off because I was fishing it around grass as well. And the number two Gamagatsu EWG hooks, they, uh, they, did the, they do the trick, man. I caught one almost five, it was like a high four. Caught one on that the second day on this deal right here using 50 pound, straight 50 pound Sunline X Plasma Braid. That is a big key. And as you can see, there's no split ring on the front, but I think you can see that is a loop knot, ladies and gentlemen. That loop knot makes that spook just work back and forth really erratically, really easily. You just barely, barely twitch it and for that loop knot on the braid, be sure to use you some Loctite gel super glue on there. Just put a little little dibbly, little dibbly dab right on there. And then and then I just like to kind of massage it in, let it soak completely into that knot, and it locks it down super strong. I've never broken it, especially at 50. I mean, you can you can tell a Buick with this thing right here. Um, just that is the that is the whole deal. Yeah, that four and three quarters, just I saw I had both both hooks in the side of that fish's face. Just plopped it right over in the boat. Seven foot topwater jerk bait rod, the the seven foot cash and icon. It's the medium heavy version. I don't like the medium as much. This is the rod I like for jerk baits and for these kind of topwater baits. Zillion, die with zillion, seven to one. That is uh, I can cast, I could technically cast all of the 50 pound line off of this reel with this bit with the with the zero spook i mean whoosh, all of it so i have to get all the, get right to the end and then i stop it because it, it technically will cast it all off if that tells you anything about how far these reels will cast so that was a that was another big deal right there uh, was that that top water bait i caught a couple fish the second day i called a couple fish the second day uh there were not as big but i did catch that one almost five on that spook right there and then i almost don't want to tell you this but this is the tricks and the tools 
of the Elite Series. So I'm going to spill it all. The Spro. This is the new Spro. I've got my hands on one of these bad boys. The Spro Chad Shad. Those fish were coming up and they were they were active and they were feeding. And I caught a three something the second day on this right here. And those fish were active up. I couldn't get them to commit. They they busted a couple times on the spook and didn't get it. Uh, they weren't really like eating it. They were just hitting at it. I said, man, maybe they want something a little bit under the surface. I threw the Chad Shad out there. And the Chad Shad, just so you know, the Spro Chad Shad, that's what you want to throw when the fish are up in the water column and they're active. They're active. It's not a search bait. This is like a target bait. Like you're throwing it specifically to an area and then you're making it real erratic. And it, it, that bait will sit there and just almost like sit in one spot, just ch -ch 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 uh, uh, kind of like a jerk bait, but it really will, you can almost make it sus suspend and sit in one spot. Had the Gamakatsu number two, Trouble hooks on there. I believe these, no, no, those are number ones. Number one, trouble hooks on there. Had that on 18 pound Sunline Shooter. And then check out this big beast of a reel. That is the Daiwa Tatula 300, eight to one. It's got that huge handle. That huge handle is the trick for easily working this bait. So as I've got that bait out there, I'm gonna just show you real quick. As I got that bait out there, you don't have to do anything with the rod to make that bait move. You just, you're just doing little short jerks with the, with the reel handle. That big, long reel handle and that fast gear ratio make it to where you can make that bait dance just with the reel real easily. And then you can reel it, make it swim a few times, and then stop it and chop it again, all with the reel handle. That's where that bigger reel bigger handle it's got those bigger pinion gears in there because of the bigger frame of that that reel that's that's the key cashin swim bait rod this is the seven foot eight inch it's got a moderate action to it so you can see hopefully it bends kind of throughout the rod it's more that's what they call more moderate taper that is money but d don't don't let it fool you now i'm putting some pressure on this thing right here i'm putting some pressure on it in order to get that thing to to bend like that that is it is a money absolute money swim bait rod for i would call these smaller to medium sized glide baits not the big ones smaller to medium not a depth 250 they have a they have a, a stiffer bigger rod for that this is more for the smaller medium sized glides and it's got the long handle as well so you can keep it right up under you and you can do all that chopping and then lean back to it makes it easy to cast that is the tips and the tricks for what i was using at lake okeechobee in the season opener uh, again 33rd place finish super huge congratulations to my man tyler rivette uh very very happy for him he's been grinding out here for a number of years very still a very young angler he did the college thing then he went out there and dude he he's been grinding for for a handful of years man I was really happy to see him break through with a very good event. First place, he uh, he pulled it out. He didn't think he had won it and then got back to the weigh-in and looked at Bass Track and he said, oh, Lord. Um, he was uh, um, a little a little kind of caught off guard, I think, uh, with that win, but that's kind of how they come. So there's all the tips, tricks from Lake Okeechobee and the tools. Drop them down there in the comments if you have any questions or you want to add anything to what you saw in the video or you say hey john i can't believe you did you missed this or you didn't throw that i want to hear all of that drop it down there in the comments and like always i appreciate you guys watching